Hi, I'm Ted Wolf, presented by Guidewise. Welcome to the Implementers Podcast, where we connect you to the stories and insights of people who have mastered implementation. Why? Because ideas are easy, but implementation is hard. Join us as we uncover the secrets of successful implementation so you can conquer your implementation struggles. Welcome to the Implementers Podcast, presented by Guidewise, where we focus on the topics of implementation because ideas are easy, but implementation is hard. Today, my guest is Alice Ye. I'd like to welcome you to the, to the podcast, Alice. Thanks, Ted. I'm excited to be here. Alice, your background is pretty uh, starstruck in many ways. You went to some pretty <laughs> prestigious colleges. You've had great experience working with big companies, but all of a sudden you kind of felt stuck. So let's talk a little bit, if you can, bring us up to date. What's your journey and your career like since you're a career coach? What's your experience been and how did you get to where you are now? Yeah, um, I, like you said, I'm, I'm a bit of an overachiever. <laughs> Um, so after graduating from undergrad, I started my career out on Wall Street and I was there for a couple of years. I got to work internationally. I worked, uh, I spent a year in New York, a year in London, uh, sorry, a year in New York, a year in Hong Kong and three years in London. Um, but through that journey of climbing the corporate ladder, I still felt like something was missing. So most people say you go to business school to reset your career. So I did that, followed that um, advice, went to business school. And after graduating from there, I came out here to San Francisco where I worked for Google. So started at Big Tech. Um, and I was there for four years. And after the shiny object syndrome wore off, I, I felt like something was still missing with, from my career. Um, and while I was at Google, I, no matter how hard I worked, how hard I tried, I spent, um, I worked overtime, worked on weekends, sometimes checking in on, on holidays, the, you know, what, what people do when you want to be the best and, and do your best. And no matter how hard I worked and tried, I couldn't get promoted. And I actually ended up getting laid off, uh, after working there for four years, um, and I was very burnt out and I decided I wanted to take a year off to really find myself and figure out what made sense for me in terms of next steps for my career. And after that year off, I traveled, I focused on some personal passion projects. I um, did things like start a travel blog. I did yoga teacher training. Um, so things that really filled me with joy personally. And when I went back to work uh, at corporate, I started working at a couple startups um, and through life and, and changes in the market, I went through two more layoffs. Um, and th through all of this experience, it was always this feeling of trying to chase something where I felt like um, purpose and meaning was a bit lacking from my career. And I was always just following what People said of, um, you know, what we hear from our parents or society where you work hard, do as best as you can, get a good grades, go to a good school, get good jobs, and that's how you'll find success. But even on paper, even though I looked successful, something was still feel missing from my career. And so um, I actually decided to work with a coach where through the work with her, I figured out that to me, what purpose meant to me and where I found meaning in my work. And that to me personally was this idea of mentorship and, and helping others. And that was the role that I enjoyed the most throughout my entire career in terms of helping others and coaching them um, throughout all of my career. So coaching was something that I really liked and wanted to explore more of. And the other thing that I found when I worked with a coach was that living here in San Francisco, there's a lot of talk about starting your own company and, and the startup mentality. And so I always felt like I had to have this brand new, innovative idea that no one's ever thought of in order to start a company. But working through the coach with my with the coach at the time, uh, she pointed out that that's not necessarily true. That's a false belief that I had. And you don't, it, starting a company doesn't have to be a brand new idea. Um, it's, it's like what people say when you uh, 
the, the analogy she used was thinking about you starting, you know, opening your own restaurant. There's lots of restaurants. That's not a brand new idea, but people still do it because they enjoy that idea of sharing food that they love with, with people. So that really opened my eyes. And that's where I decided to become a career coach. Um, because I, I've always given advice to friends, family, coworkers, um, junior members of my teens around career and, and helping them succeed. And so that led me to kind of where I am today. And what's funny is that once I made that decision to start pursuing coaching as a, um, as a essential idea, originally as a side hustle, um, it, a couple weeks later, I got laid off. So I took it as a sign from the universe to go all in mm -hmm. on this journey. And that's where I've been uh, for the past year and a half. Okay. So if I could summarize, you had the ideal life in many respects. And I think the lesson to learn, and correct me if I'm wrong, the lesson to learn is don't buy into all the hype. Because if I can give a little more detail, your undergraduate uh, was from Princeton. And your yes. MBA was from Wharton. Yes. Two marquee colleges. <laughs> You've worked for big, big name companies. So people can put on paper all these great attributes that they think will open doors for them. But in effect, you still felt stuck, which a lot of people do. Yes. So you went through the journey that helped clarify what you need to do. And you call yourself a clar a coach a career coach that is really geared towards clarity yes. tell us a little bit more and enlarge that concept of clarity if you could yeah for sure i think um oftentimes when people think of career coach they think of someone who helps them with their resume review interview prep and and things like that which is great and definitely needed for for some for some people but i always felt like um What's missing is that that step you have to take before you start working on your resume and, and take, um, you know, practice interview, interviewing um, is the idea of where, what career you actually want to have. Uh, what you said earlier is, is exactly what happened with me, where we're told to go down a certain path or we pick a job right out of college because that's based on what we studied and, and you start going down this path and people feel like they have to stay on that path and they end up in a place where they're not happy. They don't feel fulfilled. They're unsatisfied with their career, but they don't know where they want to go next. And so my role as a career clarity coach is to help them figure out what makes sense for them in terms of where they want to go to make that career change. And Sure, you can work on your resume and all that, but if you don't know where you're going or where you want to go, that's really hard. Um, and so I focus on that, really that first initial step of helping essentially my clients find that clarity. So tell me a little bit about the process of finding that clarity. How do you actually help them go through that journey? Yeah, the there's really three main pillars, I call it, that I work with clients on, and it's purpose, alignment, and mindset. And so with purpose, it's really figuring out what, what connects them to the work they do, what would help them feel like the work they do is meaningful and gives them a purpose. And that can be very esoteric and vague, especially if you don't know how to think about that. I struggled with that through all my changes, and it wasn't until I started working with Coach till I really figured that out. And, and what I do with clients to help them figure that out is to really focus on what their strengths are. So what are they good at? What are they naturally good at? What their interests and passions are? Um, and what they, where they feel like they have impact, um, where they have felt like they've made impact that felt really fulfilling. Um, and it doesn't always necessarily have to be in your career. Sometimes that's through volunteer work or, or other things they do outside of, of their career. And figuring out the common themes across those three areas or the intersection of those three things is really how you can figure out what that, that purpose looks like for, for each person. Um, and then from there, we can start to think about, okay, is there a career out of that or what types of roles can offer that, um, 
And so that's, that's the purpose piece. The second area is alignment. And this is where we think about our values and what's important to us. So oftentimes when people are thinking about careers, the very first thing naturally that people think about is obviously the salary. How much will I get paid? What is my title going to be? And, and that oftentimes there's other things that are as important in thinking about a career opportunity that often gets put on the back burner or the person doesn't think about how important um, those areas could be. So things like um, you know, the company culture, are there growth opportunities within the culture? What does the support look like? Um, where, what is you know, work-life balance or how does that play into your, your overall life? Those are all areas that are also equally as important to think about. And I think a lot of people often will focus on one of those, I call them career core values, one of those career core values and not really consider the others. And so helping the client, they helping them figure out what are their priorities. Um, and that's based on their definition of success. Oftentimes the definition of success is told to us through society or parents. Um, and so each of us have an idea of what success means to them or what it looks like to them. And that can be different from what it looks like to society or, or you know, what your parents have told you. So helping the clients kind of differentiate between what they really think is success for them and what's a priority for them in terms of what they want that career opportunity to look like and making sure that that's aligned with the opportunity, whether the, their current role or future roles that they're, they're considering. And then the last piece is around mindset. And this is around the fears and self-doubts that people often have. And one of the common things I hear, especially from high achievers like me, where this idea of you've been on this path for so long, um, you've experienced a lot of success on paper, and now this fear of starting over or the fear of the uncertainty, um, ultimately it comes down to a little bit of the fear of failure. And through those fears, that can really hold you back. Um, and so by kind of giving into those fears, you, the clients are hesitant to make changes. So this last piece around mindset is really helping them identify what those fears are and what's what they're struggling with and find ways to overcome that. So let's start unpacking these three items because there's an awful lot here to yes. talk about. <laughs> How often do you have a client that you run through the process and they end up saying, I never thought of these things. So I think I value my present position and my career more. So maybe I don't want to make the change. How often does that happen? Uh, it actually hasn't happened, but I could see that potentially happening because you know, they think that they want a change or they've been glamorizing you know, other roles or, or other opportunities. But once they go through this process, they might find that new ways to either appreciate their current role or um, ways that they find that that it, it is actually in alignment. Um, so it is possible, um, but for the most part, I haven't personally encountered clients like that. Okay. Purpose. Let's talk about that. How does somebody actually find their purpose? We've talked to other people on the podcast and they say that the clouds don't separate, the lightning comes down and all of a sudden you got your God given purpose. <laughs> How do you help people find their purpose? How do they know when they found it? Yeah, it is definitely not uh, an overnight thing. As, as you just mentioned, it, it is a bit of a process. Um, and the first part is really to look within, to really understand yourself. And I think a lot of people don't spend a lot of time really, really thinking deeply about themselves, thinking about what motivates them, what drives them, um, and really understanding what, what makes them tick. Um, and so really having that self-awareness uh, is really the first step. Um, and the... So in terms of figuring out purpose, there's a framework that I like to use, which is the Ikigai framework. It's a Japanese concept. Mm -hmm. um, it translates to a reason for being. And so it's this idea of looking at four different areas. 
I, I talked about a little bit earlier. So the first area is around your strengths. So really considering and thinking about what you're good at, what you're naturally good at. And this could be, these could be things that you hadn't thought about um, in terms of what, what you may be good at that others are not. Um, so thinking about your strengths. And the second area is around your, your passions and your interests. So what interests you, what, what keeps you in, motivated and naturally just excited, um, you know, what topics or what types of things, what type of work keeps you excited and interested. The third area is, uh, it's in the framework, it's, it's coined or termed as what the world needs. And I always found that really hard to, to, to work on because the world needs a lot of things, but mm -hmm. where, what is my specific role in that? So the way I like to think about this specific area with my clients is thinking about what kind of impact do you want to have or have you had? And when you think about it from that perspective, it makes it a lot more, uh, more, more accessible in terms of where you feel like you can have impact and versus, you know, just what the world needs. And the last one is what you can be paid for. And so um, with that aspect, it's, it's oftentimes that's, that's where the, the career piece can come in. So not every passion is something that you can monetize. Um, and not every, you know, not every role is, is necessarily a, a career that's possible. So, so taking that money aspect uh, into consideration is, is the last piece. Once we go through the purpose and the four areas, then we start aligning our core values with that. Yes. No that's different right. than what a business does. And we say we have to find what our core values are that will make us successful, that motivate us and keep us in a mindset, if we will. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about how you keep people mindful of their core values and not forget about them. Yeah. So I think one of the things I, I like to walk with my clients through is actually um, before thinking about the future is really thinking about the past because your core values have always been with you from for as long as you can, you know, as you've been in being um, uh -huh. because they've really been driving your decisions and the core values are, are, are a little bit influenced and molded by what your parents have taught you, what you've learned in school and, and outside influences. But there is still this element of what is personal to you. And that's why they're called core values. So when I work with clients around their core values, it's looking at major decisions in their past to help them figure out, okay, why did they make that decision? What was really driving them to make that decision? What influenced them? And oftentimes what would, when working with clients, what comes out is that there was always a few different ideas or, or core values that was underlying all of the decisions that they made, whether consciously or not. And once you understand that that's one of your core values, then when you think about decisions going forward, it makes it a lot easier to, to recall that aspect. And when you're trading off, um, you know, two opportunities to, which both sound really good, but one of them might align better to your core values. So that's, that's always how I like to present that to my clients and help them remember those things when they have big decisions or, or questions about their paths is to think about, okay, how did you think about the decisions you made in the past and, and why you made those decisions? Um, and sometimes those decisions that you made in the past, maybe they're the, you know, looking back, if you were to do it differently, why would you do it differently? And so that is, can also be a learning as well. And let's talk about mindset, third area. Mm -hmm. Define mindset as you use it in your everyday life and with your clients. Yeah, for me, mindset is about really building that confidence and resilience. Um, and so the confidence to do what you want to do and, and make the decisions that feel right for you and resilience in that 
is as important when in times of setbacks and failures, you are able to bounce back and recover from that. So those are really the two things I really focus on when it comes to mindset is the confidence and resilience because nobody's perfect. Uh, We will always encounter some sort of setback or failure and how you recover from that and how you learn from that is really what can help you move forward. And then from the confidence aspect, it's, um, it, yeah, that, that just helps you believe in yourself and, and, and know that the decisions you're making or the things that you're doing are, you're, you're capable and able to. Would you agree then that purpose and your core values are investigation? You're really trying to discover more about yourself. Self-awareness is the key. Mindset yes. is where the work actually takes place, though. Am yes, I accurate definitely. in that? Yes, definitely. Uh, I know from my personal experience, that's exactly what happened, where um, I, I, I decided that coaching would fulfill my purpose um, from like a meaningful work perspective. And starting my own business aligned with a lot of my core values in terms of autonomy and freedom and, and things, um, things along those aspects. But the mindset piece is really the tough part in terms of, okay, now that I have thought about wanting to start my own business as a, as a coach, the take, you know, having that confidence to take action, to, to really take those steps to make, to move forward on that. And that's definitely been the hardest piece. And I think that can be true for anyone where once, even once you make a decision, the hardest part is now to take action on that. And so uh, when it comes to careers, oftentimes I hear a lot of people complaining about how they hate their job, you know, life sucks, whatever, but they're not willing to do anything about it. And so having that mindset of, okay, I'm going to take control and take action, that can often be the hardest step. And how then do you work with them from a mindset standpoint to say, here's how you overcome your fear of failure, your fear of not being smart enough, your fear of rejection. How do you get into the mindset and how do you start working with them to address those areas? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a little bit different for everyone, but I would say oftentimes it comes down to looking at past successes. So, um, in times where if they're afraid to start over, for example, um, it's, it's not about starting over. It's thinking about, okay, where, where have you felt like you had to start over before? How did you, how did you move, get through that? What did you, what steps did you take? And so helping the clients see that they have encountered successes in those times of uncertainty really helps them build that confidence up where, okay, I've, gone through it before, I can do it again. And this is no different from that past example. Um, How? I'm sorry, yes. go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say. Um, and then the other aspect of, uh, the, in addition to thinking about past ex- ex- uh, successes is also now forcing yourself to, to take risks. Um, and so, it, you know, starting small with taking a risk, it doesn't have to always be this big, scary thing. Uh, starting small with with risks and getting yourself comfortable with the uncertainty. And that is the other aspect of really overcoming those those fears to, um, yeah, to help overcome those fears is, is working on those two areas. You, uh, you have a a background where you were educated at Princeton and Wharton. You worked with JP Morgan. You worked with Google. Obviously, statistics and metrics are not something that are new to you. When you're working with an individual to help them process through purpose, define their core values, and then finally work on the mindset, and the mindset is where the change takes place, change management, how do you use metrics, if you do, in working and coaching with individuals to help them make that change? Uh, that's a good question. I hadn't thought about it that way, but I guess in terms of metrics, it's going back to that piece I talked about where you think about your past uh, experiences, your past successes, and 
while I don't necessarily, you know, make it specific numbers driven, um, you could think about it in that aspect for, for people who are more, more analytically driven like that. Um, yeah. So I find, I, I find myself that very often in talking with individuals, they magnify one instance. Yes. Oh, this happened. And all of a yes. sudden their entire mental mindset is overwhelmed with it. So perhaps going back and being able to say, well, how many times has that happened and starting yes. putting metrics around that can justify the need to change. So going through the actual change management, then how would you coach them and guide them through the actual work of doing the change, changing behavior? Yeah. So um, it's, it's figuring out, it's oftentimes that fear and, and fear of making a change is because the change feels like it's such a big step and most people don't know how to take that big step. And so they end up doing nothing. Um, and that's, that's generally what I've seen when it comes to career change. They know they want to change their career, but they don't know to, to what or, or even what steps to take. So they just stay in their current role because it's easier to be in the status quo. So, um, when it comes to actually making a change is to, is to really break it down, um, and break it down to more, small achievable steps and things that are more more understandable of okay i can make some progress on this one step and once i've done that then you're just that one step closer to the ultimate change or or goal that you want and i think when you break it down to a to a smaller action plan then that's where things can feel a lot more achievable yeah you have a, a, a saying that I saw on your website and other areas that I think is very attractive, and that's normalize setbacks. Yes. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so normalizing setbacks, as I said earlier, it's it's impossible to go through your entire life and not experience a setback or a failure. Um, and what I think people often do is they that fear of failing or the fear of encountering failure or, or coming across as a failure really holds them back from taking risks or taking the steps to, to reach um, their, the specific goal that they want because they're afraid of failing. And, and, and part of, you know, what I want to do with clients and you know, coming on podcasts like this is to, spread the message that actually setbacks are necessary and failures are a part of success. Um, in order to, to learn from your experiences, you do need to experience these setbacks and failures because that's how you grow. That's how you learn from your mistakes essentially and, and gain experience. And, and for every, I'm sure every successful person that's out there, they have definitely experienced their own share of setbacks and failures, but that's often not talked about as much as, as it should be. And how often in your experience working for very well-known organizations or even smaller non-big name organizations, but in your own experience, how often have you found people that felt the same as you? They felt stuck. They didn't know where to go. They didn't know what to do, but they just said, I'm going to lead a life of quote unquote, quiet desperation because the money's good and I got some safety and security here and I'm just going to grind my way through it. How often have you found people that felt exactly that way, but they didn't do anything? Uh, a lot more than you would, than you think. Um, I would say current in my current life stage and, and mid career, I would say this is the people that I generally work with the most is because they have experienced success up until this point, but now they're like, they feel stuck, but this fear of taking steps or the fear of failure keeps them essentially makes them settle. They settle for this. They settle for mediocrity as I, I often say. Um, and so they, they play it safe because they're afraid to take those steps to make changes. And so I would say that almost everyone, around you know this mid-career stage of their life is in this not not everyone but most people i would say are in that state of i'm just i've been here for so long i don't know what to do next but because i don't know what to do next i'm just gonna stick you know stick with mm -hmm. it 
So So you separated yourself from the normal herd, I'll say, mentality. What regrets do you have about the choice you did make and you went out on your own and you're looking at your current life right now? Do you have regrets? What regrets might you have about making the change? Um, I don't think I have any regrets per se. I think I have definitely struggles um, that I hadn't anticipated. Uh, for me as as an entrepreneur, I, I underestimated how much of a grind it can be when it comes to, as a solopreneur, all the work is on you. Um, and so I, I am luckily a very disciplined person. So I, I know that I have to take, do, take the action and, and take steps every day because I am the only one who can. Um, but I, I definitely underestimated that. Um, and the mindset piece is, is still a struggle. Um, there are days where I feel like I'm not going anywhere and did I make the right choice? But when I go back to, my why of, you know, this is where I feel like I can really impact people and, and really feel like I'm making a difference and helping people, you know, live better lives. And that really makes me feel re rewarded and fulfilled. And so I just have to think back to that. And, and that helps me keep going. Um, so I would say the the mindset is, is often a struggle as, as an entrepreneur. And I've heard from others that it's, it's not unusual. <laughs> I think that the experience that you just described is the typical normal experience of the entrepreneur, and that's part of the weeding out process. Who has the passion and who has the gumption to be able to stick in and take all of the failures, all the no's and all the uncertainty really that yeah. there is present. And that goes back to your mindset. So what keeps your passion flowing? You can say my purpose, helping people. Tell me a little more detail. What keeps that passion flowing? in in days and nights of doubt which if you don't have that you're not a real entrepreneur in my <laughs> opinion yes um yeah for me it comes down to i i feel like i'm mo most energized after client calls because i can see the work impacting the clients that i work with i can see the changes that they're thinking about the the aha moments that they get in the calls and and that feels really rewarding and so that keeps me going on one aspect. And then the other aspect is um, kind of going back to the, uh, the values alignment and thinking about now I, you know, I can set my own schedule. I have the flexibility and the freedom to work when I want. Uh, I don't have to work the standard Monday to Friday, nine to five. Sometimes I take a random Monday off, but sometimes I'll work on a Saturday. So having that freedom is very free is, um, liberating and and I, I do think about the in order to keep going during those times of struggle I, I do go back to thinking about okay what do I have now that I didn't have before one of the things I don't have now which is which is amazing is I don't have to work for a manager that I disagree with or or a senior management whose vision I don't believe in or or deal with politics in the office and bureaucracy so those are all things I'm grateful to not have to think about. And then there's the flip side of, well, now I, I have to do everything myself. <laughs> well, I think there are trade-offs that are well worth taking. And particularly if you have the passion for it and the purpose that for the, for the freedom that you find valuable and the integrity, I'll say, of living by your values. So what lies in the future for yourself, Alice? Yeah, so I, yeah, my, my role is, um, you know, I'm constantly looking for, always looking for more clients to, to help them. Um, I am going on different podcasts like this to help spread my message of normalizing setbacks, um, sharing my story, my, my experiences, and, and if that resonates or, or helps someone to, to, move from that state of being stuck and not knowing what to do next to, okay, let me think about, you know, making a change and actually taking action to do that. And I'm, I'm happy for that. And great if they want to work with me or if they want to work with someone else, uh, as long as, you know, more people are finding that passion and, and fulfillment in their careers rather than just feeling stuck and, and unhappy is, is motivating for me. 
Okay. And Alice House, what's the best way to contact you? Yeah. So my website is alicecoaching.com and people can, if, you know, if anything resonates with them, they can learn more about me, the work I do. Um, and you can also find me on social media. I'm on LinkedIn as Alice Ye, uh, or Instagram at Hey Alice Ye. And those are different ways to contact me. Um, and, oh, yes. and, I was and, just gonna... and go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no worries. I was just going to say, um, going back to the, the, the whole values, um, uh, considering what values you have and what's a priority for your career. I do actually have a free resource for listeners. If they're interested in essentially doing like a, a gut health check on their career, I call it a career checkup guide. And that essentially walks you through different areas, uh, or factors to consider for your career. Things like compensation, um, growth opportunities, culture, um, and really help people take essentially do a pulse check on where they are in their career, as well as what is a priority for them. And is are they aligned? Um, and that's it can be like a first step in terms of to making, you know, bringing that self awareness into into light and understanding what their values and priorities are and, and seeing how that matches up with their current roles. And to get the and, evaluation guidebook, they'd go to your website, and that's Alice Yay Y E H dot com. Correct? Yes, that's right. And I was going to say, actually, for you, you can find it on my website as uh, definitely. And I actually did create a a Bitly link, so it's bit dot ly slash Implementers Career Check, and that's another way to download the guide as well. Very good. Okay. Alice, thank you very much for your time today. It's very informative. You have a very interesting background, and I think you have a lot of credibility as far as being able to bring clarity to a person's career and their life. So thank you very much for your time. Certainly enjoyed talking with you. and look, look forward to future contact. Thank you so much for having me, Ted. I really enjoyed being here. Thank you. Ted Wolf here. I want to thank you for joining us for this Implementers video. The Implementers podcast is presented by Guidewise, where we, along with our vetted member community, recognize that ideas are easy, but implementation is hard. To learn more about getting things done with Guidewise, please visit us at guidewise.io. And to conquer your implementation struggles, please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. Happy implementing.